This is Algebra 2, Unit 5, Lesson 6 on mortgage payments. Mortgages, not just on houses, are large amounts of money borrowed from a bank on which interest is calculated or added on on a regular basis. Usually it's a monthly basis. Regular payments are also made on the amount of money owed so that over time the principal, which is the amount, original amount borrowed, is paid off as well as any interest on the amount owed. This is a complex process that ultimately involves geometric series. So first, let's look at some basics. Exercise one, let's say a person takes out a mortgage of $200,000 and wants to make payments of $1,600 each month to pay it off. Uh, the bank is gonna charge this person 4% nominal yearly interest applied monthly. So what is the amount owed at the end of the first month? Okay, so first of all, we have to figure out how much money you're gonna to have to pay. Well, remember from um, doing our exponential functions, if you have $200,000, if it is the interest is applied monthly, it will be 1 plus 4% divided by 12, because it's each month. And if we do this for one month, and uh, then we're going to subtract out, or subtract out what you've already paid, which would be $1,600. So this is by how much you'll have left over, and this is what you're going to take off. All right, so if we put this in our calculator, 200,000 times 1 plus 0.04 divided by 12, and we're going to do that to, for one month, that gives us uh, $200,666.67. And then we want to minus the $1,600 that you've already paid in the first month. So what you're going to have left <clears throat> is going to be $199,066.67. So this would be the amount of interest that you've added on, and then this is what you've paid. Okay, now, how much of the first month's payment went to paying off the principal? and how much of it went to paying on interest and loans. So show your calculations. All right, so the amount towards the principal. We started with $200,000, and we're subtracting this amount right here. 06667. All right, so if we take $200,000 minus $199,000, 066.67, that's going to give us $933.33. $933.33. So that's the amount towards the principal. Okay, now the amount towards the interest. Okay, so we have $1,600 is a payment, and we have $933 that we have on here. So this is going to be 933 minus 1600, or 1600 minus 933, sorry, minus 933.33. So if I take 1600 minus that value, it's going to be 666.67. Okay. So we can see where that money came from. Okay. All right, now let's determine the amount owed at the end of the second month. Okay, again, show the calculations that lead to your answer. All right, so at the end of the first month, we figured out that it would be 199.66.67. So we're going to start at that value. 199.66.67. And then we're going to multiply by the 4% interest to figure out the amount of interest. Um, just going to do it once, and then going to subtract another 1,600. Okay, now this time I'm starting from this and multiplying by 4% uh, interest. So it's 199.066.67 times 1 plus 0.04 divided by 12. And I'm only going to do it for one month, so I'm not going to worry about that. And then I'm going to subtract out the $1,600 payment that I end up with. So that's going to be... $198,130.23. All right, so that's going to equal 198, 130, and then 23 cents. Okay, 
So the amount owed at the end of a month actually forms a sequence that can be defined recursively. If A1 equals 200,000, define a recursive rule that gives this sequence. Okay, so let's see what happens here. All right, so if A of 1 is equal to 200,000. All right, let's look at what, what's happening on each one of these. Well, we are multiplying by 1 plus 0.04 divided by 12 and then subtracting 1,600. So if I want to do A of n, I would take uh, the previous term, A of n minus 1, and I am multiplying it by 1 plus 0.04 divided by 12, and then minusing 1,600. So I'm taking the previous term, multiplying it by this, subtracting this. So if I was doing the next one, I'd take the next term, this right here, multiply it by 1 plus 0.04 divided by 12, minus 1,600. And there we go. So that would be the recursive sequence for that. If a person took out a $150,000 mortgage at 5% yearly interest, why would it be unwise to have monthly payments of $500? All right, well, let's see what happens when we do that. We start out with $150,000. Now, if we're doing yearly interest, so if we're going monthly, it would be 1 plus 0.05 divided by 12. And if I just did it for one month, but then I'm going to pay $500. So I'm going to subtract $500 off of that. Let's see what we end up with when we do that. $150,000 times... 1 plus 0.05 divided by 12, and then I minus the $500 that I'm going to pay per month. And I end up with $150,125. Okay, so why is that unwise? Because the interest on there, by only taking out $500, um, you owe more money than you started with. So you either have to make a bigger monthly payment or find a smaller interest rate. So that's probably not a good idea. So this is going to be, this part is going to be, interest is going to be more than your payment. Okay, so if I just look at this part right here, if I just grab this up here and I take the $500 off it, all right, so I'm going to delete this. The interest amount is going to be $625. So it's $625 in interest added on, but you're only making a $500 payment. So you're actually making more, uh, paying more out than you can uh, on the account. All right, so now if we you can define the sequence recursively as an exercise 1D, it would be nice to have a formula that would calculate what we owed after a certain number of months explicitly. So if I wanted to plug in the number of months, I could automatically know how much I owe. That's what we're going to look for, rather than having to know the previous month. So let's go back to our example of the $200,000 mortgage at 4% yearly interest. Okay, we are making $1,600 monthly payments, uh, and um, let's see if we can see how much we owe after end payments. So let's see if we can figure out this generally. R is going to be the 0.04 divided by 12. P is going to be 200,000, and M is 1,600 to stand for the monthly rate in decimal form. Okay, so explain what the following calculation represents. All right, P would be the 200,000 times 1 plus R. When you multiply that together, what are you getting? You're getting the amount with interest. And M is the payment. So if this is the amount with interest and the payment, then when you subtract them, you are left with the amount owed after one month. Okay, now, what does the following calculation represent? So if we take this right here, this is after one month, whatever amount we have, we are going to multiply that by one plus R to get the interest owed, and subtract m. So this times this will give me the payment at, or amount owed after two months. So what's happening here, we took this amount here, which is right here, multiplied it by 1 plus r, and then subtracted m from it after two months. This is how much you would owe. So if I multiply this 1 plus r through the parentheses here, 
I would get P times 1 plus R quantity squared minus M times 1 plus R. So I'm just distributing this to here, and then minus M. So this would be after two months. All right, so let's see if we can figure what happens after three and four months. All right, so this is at two months. We would be P times 1 plus R squared minus M times 1 plus R minus M. This would be two months. So what would we do again? We would have to multiply by 1 plus R and then subtract M. So I would take this entire thing right here and multiply it by 1 plus R, and that would give me, whoops, so I'd multiply it by 1 plus R and then subtract the M from it. So 1 plus R times this will be P times 1 plus R to the third minus M times 1 plus R squared minus M times 1 plus R, and then I'd have to subtract the next month's payment, so that would be three months. So what would four months be? What would happen to the exponents? They would increase one more time. I'd have to multiply by 1 plus R again. That would give me 1 plus R to the fourth minus M times 1 plus R to the third minus M times 1 plus R squared minus M times 1 plus R. That would give me the 1 plus R each time, and then I have to pay my, my payment, so that would be after four months. Okay, so let's look what happens to our exponents when we do that. So based on C, write an equation for how much would be owed after n months. So A of n, let's see what's happening every time. Well, it would be P times 1 plus R. Now notice, this is after two months, this is after three months, this is after four months. So this would be raised to whatever n that we would on. So if it was six months, this would be six. And each successive one is going to be reduced by how much? Well, let's see. It's going to be reduced by m times 1 plus r to the n minus 1. So you can see right here, this is the second term. This would be the first term. And so on and so on and so on. And so we end up with, we would keep going on here, so we end up with minus m times 1 plus r to the n minus 2, dot, 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 minus m times 1 plus r, and then minus m. So we would keep doing that until we get down to the n zero term that we wanted. All right, so when we're working this out, you would just keep subtracting n minus 1 until we get down to the number of months that we have. So the equation, you can see we're just multiplying where each of the number of terms would be reduced by 1 until we get down to the 0 term because this would be to the um, 0 term and this would be to the none. All right, so let's save the last part of this for the next lesson.